Welcome back to the channel guys and today we're going to go over the temperament of a Cane Corso. Now you can just go to Google and you're going to get the same canned answer over and over and over again. From my own personal experience, I'm not a vet, I'm not a dog trainer, but I've spent countless hours with my, where is my Cane Corso? Bruce! Let's go! People want to see you! They don't want to just look at you on this sexy shirt, they actually want to see you in person. What up dude? What's up? We're gonna film some videos and you're gonna stand right in front of me. They can't see you and they, they can't see me. You wanna give me a hug and kiss? Okay. I'll appease you and give you a hug and kiss. Thank you. I love you too. We best bros. I'm always waking you up from naps to do videos. We gotta fix this situation. Just give me a second guys. Let me, let me just re... Let me just redo this situation a little bit and then we'll get going with the video. If you guys go to Google, you're gonna see if you type in Cane Corso temperament, you're going to get calm, confident, potential aggression, protective, loving, all this all those canned answers. And that's great because you need to know what you're getting into. But I just want to give you a more in-depth experience. He just turned three. Look at how good, look at how good we look together when I wear this shirt. Now if I didn't have this shirt on, I'd just look like a scrub. Well, I kind of do anyways. But look at that. Don't you just want one? Look at how majestic he is in this shirt. I, I actually have new merch guys down below. If you check out my merch box down below, you're gonna see two new Kane Corso t-shirts and two new Kane Corso sweatshirts. I don't have one yet, mine's on the way. I suggest you guys grab some yourself so you can look as sexy as this guy. So let me just start when he's a puppy, okay? That's where we'll start with his temperament. He has the same basic personality, but a kind of course will changes as they get older, just like your kids do. I don't have kids, but kids grow up and their personality changes. The same with a Kane Corso. So when you first get your Kane Corso, that temperament isn't gonna be consistent throughout its entire life. And it's actually gonna change quite a bit. I've had dogs my entire life and I've never seen such a change in personality that I have with this guy. He's still sweet, he's still loving, but as a puppy, he wanted attention from everyone. Everyone including strangers. Okay, so we'd be in a walk and we'd be walking and he'd do that. Like if, if he was somebody he was walking by, he'd be like this, pet me. You know, he'd, he'd put his head out. Will you pet me? Will you pet me? Very, very accepting to strangers. As he got older, that willingness or that need to be pet and get attention from strangers greatly diminished. He gives zero Fs about strangers now. Even people he knows, he's friendly with and he likes them, but it's not like it is with my wife and I. So just know for everyone that has a Kane Corso and a first time owner and it's still a puppy, that that personality will change, okay? As the dog gets older, he's gonna get more protective. He's gonna get more guardy. I always use the word guardy. Can, can guardy at least be acceptable down in the comments below? So as a puppy, Bruce, was extremely loving, okay? He was so loving as a puppy and he's still extremely loving. Connie Corso's love, like obsessed love, like your first love that you love and they broke your heart and you're obsessed with after they broke your heart, that's these guys. They will love you to no end. I've never seen an animal love so hard in my life as I have a Connie Corso. Connie Corso's are extremely happy dogs. My wife says Bruce is her ray of sunshine. Every morning we wake up, Bruce is just sitting there with Steve in his mouth wiggling saying, hey, let's start the day guys. And you can almost see the expression of happiness on his gigantic head. He's just so pumped for life. Like every day, it's like Christmas day to this guy. You may not see it now because I'm always getting him up during a nap for these videos. And that's the other reason. Everyone asks, do a, do a day in the life of Bruce. He sleeps all day. It's gonna be boring. But I do kind of have a little, a little idea to maybe do something on that theme. And if you guys love this channel, like Bruce Wayne loves me, then do us a solid. Just do Bruce and I a solid. Subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, ring my ding link so you don't miss any of the newest videos on Kane Corsos or Bruce Wayne. He is never impressed with that. The whole ring my dingling thing, I think it's catchy. Connie Corsos are extremely possessive. 
I'm sure you have seen, if you've watched any of these videos, Bruce with Steve. All right, Bruce walks around with Steve half the day in his mouth. Steve is Bruce's teddy bear that he's had since he was a puppy, okay? Bruce doesn't destroy things. Um, as a puppy, I trained him not to rip things apart. So he still has all his puppy toys. It's great. So it's almost like they have a childlike personality. They love to play. Bruce's favorite thing isn't food. It may not even be me or my wife. It's play. Now, when I worked from an office and he was gone and he was alone for 10 hours a day, by the time I drove to work, drove home and was there all day, he was about 10-ish hours alone, I'd let him out of his crate because he was still young. He wasn't old enough to be left alone all day like he is now. And I'd get home from work and you would think the dog would have to pee. I'd bring him outside, run to his ball. He'd start showing me, he'd run up to me and show me his ball. He's like, look at my ball, let's play. Five minutes, 10 minutes later, I'm still playing off the mic. Bruce, you haven't went to the bathroom yet. It's been like 12 hours since you took a pee and you're not even full grown yet. That's how much this dog likes to play. I would literally have to say, Bruce, go to the bathroom, but not right now, dude, not right now. He knows what that means and he will go pee on something. Don't pee in the house. Another fun fact, he's only went to the bathroom two times in the house and that was the first week we had him. There was one pee and one poop. You rock, my friend. You rock. So far, he's just slightly over three, and that play factor has not died down. I'm sure it's gonna drop a little bit as he gets older. So that, I'm sure that's not gonna completely diminish just because how much he loves to play. Play over, play over anything like I said. Play over food, play over treats, play over my wife and I. He just wants to play. Another common trait with Kane Corsos is they're extremely possessive. If he if he believes he owns something, that's his. So for example, any of his stuffed animals he has, those are Bruce Wayne's. His toys outside, those are Bruce Wayne's. I've never ever in my life seen a dog, and I've had dogs my entire life, and been around dogs my entire life, as possessive as a Connie Corso is. Sorry we're keeping you up right now, dude. After this video you can nap. Another trait they obviously have is they are just natural, instinctive guardians. They're not the type of guardian where if you're walking them, they're gonna just go lunge at someone and attack them saying, no, stay away from my people. If they see that person as a threat, for example, if Bruce finds someone a threat because he just has a weird feeling about them, they may be acting kind of funny. Like I've had people come up to me before, be like, can I pet them? And they're like this to them. And like, is it okay if I pet them? Now, is this normal human behavior? If somebody came to you like this, what are you gonna do? You're gonna be like, get the F away from me, bro. Are you about to hit me? Cause I'm gonna smack you. And he does the same thing. So if you come at him all weird, he's gonna start barking at you, his hair is gonna stand up and he's gonna stand his ground, I've seen it, but he's not gonna like chase and like lunge on to you like that, okay? He's not gonna do that. People coming on the property, if they're friends, they can come on the property. He's gonna bark at them. Strangers coming on the property, it's a whole different ball game. Um, you can just tell in his bark in his demeanor that it's He definitely sees that as a threat someone he's never seen before is gonna seem like a massive threat to him So for example if my sister-in-law when she comes over she just walks in Bruce freaks out Jumps off the couch, you know hair standing on end growling, but as soon as he sees her he's like all right cool now if I bring someone over to the house that he does not know and has never seen that process goes on a little bit longer. You know, I have to let them in the house. I have to tell the dog it's okay. Um, I kind of let him smell things out. He may bark at him for a minute. I have him sit down. I have, the, I have the person that's with me just ignore the dog altogether. And within a minute, he typically realizes, hey, they're not a threat. I'm just going to lay here and be calm now. If you read online, you're going to see a lot of Potential for destructiveness, potential for aggression, potential for aggression towards other animals. And that's all true if you haven't been a proper leader for your dog. These dogs are very strong-willed, okay? Um, so if you haven't done proper training, then you should, then you're gonna have a problem on your hands. You're gonna have a destructive, angry, not very nice kind of corso to strangers. Um, and that's where, it really takes high leadership skills to own one of these dogs. There's some links in the description for anyone who's interested in becoming a better leader, a better canine leader for yourself. 
One of my very dear friends, Will, from Fenrir Canine Show, he put together this course. It's a canine boot camp. And I promise you, you guys go through this, and it's going to answer so many of your questions. I always get questions like, my dog's doing this, how do I fix it? My dog's doing that, how do I fix it? My dog's doing this, how do I fix it? And honestly, guys, it's not so much fixing one issue. It's more so fixing yourself. And I'm not trying to sound like you're a bad bad dog owner. You're, you're not, I'm sure. It's just you need different techniques. You, you need to learn how to be a good leader towards your dog, especially with this breed. If you have this breed, every single person, every single person, husband, wife, and kids need to be the leader, okay? So again, that course will teach you how to do it. Use code Jason, save 10%. You guys will be good to go. You too can have your perfect Kanai Corso like Bruce Wayne. Everyone sees him staring at me like this, right? All the time. He's always just constantly staring at me. And yes, he loves me dearly. He absolutely loves me, don't you, bro? But a massive part of why he's looking at me all the time, he's looking for direction because I made myself his leader. My wife made him his leader. So he's looking at me, hey dad, what do you want me to do right now? Can you lead me? Can you tell me what to do? So a lot of the times he's looking at me, it's because he's looking for direction in case I want him to do something. So we went over how sweet you are. We went over how protective you are. Actually, going back to protection and temperament, I always preach socialization, okay? Always, always, always. Especially through the first 12 weeks of the dog's life. But with a Conde Corso, socialization never, ever, ever ends, okay? Never. Up until this quarantine, has always been socialized, constantly being socialized. We bring him to stores, I bring him to the gym with me. Since quarantine, things have tightened up, so we haven't been out and about. I'll actually share a conversation I filmed through Snapchat. Um, my wife sent me some messages yesterday. And then it's, it, it's kind of cut weird because I'm like, I should have film recorded this just so I can share with you guys. I spend way more time than the, with the dog than my wife does because I work from home. My wife does not. She still works in a hospital setting. So just naturally I'm with the dog more. When we go out, it's on the weekends and we're always together as a family. And I'm always telling her, I'm like, you need to bring Bruce places without me. Because out of the three of us, me and her are the leaders, but I'm the main leader and then her, and then Bruce. And I'm not saying this because I'm the guy and, and I wear the pants in the family. No, it's just how the dog sees it because of my leadership and Kara's leadership and how much time I spend with him. So she had yesterday off. So she took Bruce to her place of employment yesterday to meet people, okay? So I'm just going to put up, I just literally recorded the phone on Snapchat. What happened? He barked right away because Christian came and opened the side door for me and he like stood behind the door. So he was, he barked and I knew this was Patty because she was being weird. And I told her to stop being weird because um, she was in Tina's office. And she'd like look at him and talk to him. And I'm like, Patty, he doesn't know what you're saying. Like you can't speak in sentences to him. I understand doing that. Like it's what we do. We talk to dogs. But I'm like, you're making it weird. So he barks. Um, but other than that, he was good. He sat right down in between Christian and Tina and so they could pet him. And then he ended up, he laid down and just like laid there. And then um, we're all just talking and like almost forgot he was there. And then... I think it was the housekeeper pushed her like cleaning cart outside the door and he immediately went woof, like wicked loud and it scared the out of all of us and I was like the I guarantee the entire building probably heard him barking. Um, when we first brought him in, Christian like went down the hall and someone was like, did I just hear a dog bark? And Christian's like, no, it was me. <laughs> So, anyways, I think he did good. Um, I was alert in terms of his fur and his tail and all that kind of stuff. And I was actually quite shocked at how quickly he calmed down. He relaxed. Got very comfortable. You know, he was still on alert, obviously. He's number one. He's never been to that space where I took him. You know, him going as a puppy, it's almost just like he doesn't remember any of that. So, it was all new just brought him to an office to sit with random people do you know what I mean so th that was a very different experience for him number one and it was different because it was just me and him you know you weren't there so I think that was good I think it was good that we did that um
class to help back there. Um, so hopefully that was, I feel like that was probably mentally exhausting for him between, like, between not knowing where he was going and, like, not really understanding what was expected of him in that scenario. So, anywho is all. He basically displayed exactly what a carnage course was going to do, especially when he's not used to that type of situation. Like I said, he hasn't been in public probably in, like, six weeks now. Four to six weeks. He's never been with just my wife at her work. So this is all entirely new to him. And is and although we've had him in like hundreds and hundreds and possibly thousands of different situations, that was still new to him. Mixed with people wearing masks, mixed with being in a new environment without me and now just my wife, who he's even more protective of over me, maybe because she's smaller, so he just feels he needs to protect her more. But he acted accordingly. He was not overly aggressive. I, I, she was, she made sure to be very highly aware of his body language because you can tell a lot about what a dog's going to do just by body language before they do it. And he seemed fine. He barked a few times because there's some weird people doing some weird hand things like I told you about. So he barked at him and his bark is scary and loud, but he calmed down quickly, laid down like this and just chilled because he was relaxed because he has been so socialized. So he is comfortable and he, and although he wasn't sure how to handle that situation, he quickly figured out that this is normal. Everyone here is nice and I can just chill and relax. So that's another thing with these temperaments of these dogs. They always, through their whole entire life, are going to need to be socialized. It never ends. And although the first 12 weeks is the most vital, important part, it just doesn't end, guys. Another iconic horsel temperament trait is they're extremely gentle. I know that I've done a video last week on how you got to be very careful because it can be dangerous. And that just comes down to the size of them. But they are extremely, extremely gentle. They're great with kids. I wouldn't leave them alone with a kid because like I described in my other video, but they're very gentle. I have a piece of turkey right here. I'm going to show you how gentle he is. You want this? Watch how gentle he takes it from me. It's like the girl of your dreams, no teeth. He's so gentle. And now he's got a slobbery leg. Bruce. Watch this, guys. Bruce, who's that? Who's that? Bruce. Doesn't take much to get him riled up, though. Let's go. Good boy. And he's careful around my stuff. He could have literally just plowed through all of this stuff. And he just gently stepped over the camera. Another, another trait, temperament trait of a Kane Corso is they don't have extreme energy, but they have energy and they need a job to do. I give Bruce a weight vest and take him on a walk because putting the weight vest on him makes him think I'm doing a job. And when you put it on him, he stands all proud and he starts walking all fast. And then I can just tell he's just so much more tired out. And it's not because he's carrying 15, 20 pounds on a two mile walk. It's because of the fact that he has a job so he was mentally stimulated. So this type of temperament on these dogs, they need a job to do. They need to be mentally stimulated. Just throwing a ball back and forth for an hour isn't gonna cut it, guys. They need a job to do. Mental stimulation will get you so much farther than physical exercise. Combining the two is like one of the best things you can do. Another Kane Corso temperament trait is they're pretty mellow inside. Like what you see is what you get. Like, I'm not joking. It's the inside the house has never been playtime with Bruce, okay? Yes, you'll see on my Instagram feed, Jason Corey 4 and one we play with a dog in the house. We'll play with a stuffed animal, but it's light play. It's rough housing in a light manner, like, you know, just pushing each other around. And it's not going hard. It's not rough housing super hard. And I've always done this because I want him to know that in the house is not the time to run around. It's not the time to jump up and down. Save that up for outside when you have a yard to play in. So temperament wise in the house, he's mellow. He doesn't get into things. He doesn't get reambunctious. He may want to show you Steve, but even if you play with Bruce and Steve, it's going to be pretty mellow. It's not going to be over the top. Kane Corsos are extremely alert. So for example, if I just put a sweatshirt right here, okay? And, and Bruce didn't see me put the sweatshirt there, but the sweatshirt normally isn't here. 
So I just walked in the house, put the sweatshirt here, and then the dog was in the other room, for example. And I went in the other room, came back out with Bruce. I promise you, the first thing he's gonna do, he's gonna see that sweatshirt, come on over and give it a thorough inspection. And not only that, he's gonna look at me, look back at the sweatshirt, look at me again and be like, yo, you know there's a sweatshirt over here? It wasn't here five minutes ago. Why is this sweatshirt here? So they're very alert and they're very curious. This is a very curious dog. They wanna know what's going on at all times. If you do something, they wanna know what you're doing. They're gonna follow you around the house because they naturally wanna look over you. They're curious and they wanna protect you. I hope this video just gave you a good perspective of the kind of temperament a Connie Corso has. And again, you can't get that temperament with, without two things. A, it starts with your breeder. You need dogs of proper temperament bred. A lot of breeders don't breed for temperament. And I always tell people, don't look for color, don't look for size, look for temperament. When you're picking a dog, discuss with your breeder the temperament you're looking for. Health and temperament, health and temperament. And then, and then it comes down to your leadership skills. Can you be a leader to the dog? Can everyone in the family be a leader to the dog? And can you be consistent with that leadership throughout his entire life? Do all the things, like, subscribe, ring the ding-a-ling, give Bruce some love. I'd love to hear in the comments below any quirks or traits that your Kane Corso or any other dog you have. I know a lot of people watch these videos that don't own Kane Corsos, they just like the dog information. A lot of the information I give, for example, the neutering stuff or the socialization stuff, a lot of that is just for every dog in general. But because I own a Kane Corso and to please the YouTube algorithm and there's so many dog channels out there, I just base everything off a of Kane Corso because that's what I own currently. And I will always most likely have a Kane Corso in my life. And someday I'm hoping that Bruce has a little brother of his own that he can be obsessed with, hopefully not carry it around the house. But I guarantee if I brought another Kane Corso in the home, he would think I brought it home for him and he would think it's his. All right guys, until next time, thanks for watching. Merch in the description, in my merch box. Check it out. All right, guys, appreciate all the love. Thanks, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.